It was 60 years ago today, in the backwoods of northern Canada, when a miracle occurred. A young mother of five gives birth to five baby girls. The world's first surviving identical quintuplets captured the imagination of a world mired in the midst of the Great Depression. And in no time, the Dion sisters were the most famous little girls on the face of the earth. A family torn asunder, uh, a government stepping in and actually kidnapping children, the role of the press, and ultimately a mother and father who, before their very eyes, see their children kidnapped and taken away from them for potentially 18 years. And for me, this was the stuff of, of drama because the subject matter is just so compelling. Behind the facade of fame and fortune lies a truly tragic tale. And what follows is an incredible saga of greed, pain, and political manipulation. As the babies are confiscated from their parents, and raised in the glorified captivity of Quintland. There was an enormous response from the press, which then fed this kind of frenzy in people to know uh, about these children. The world attention focuses on this, this village, this tiny, tiny community where no one sees any strangers ever, and suddenly the world press is there. And in the case of uh, Dr. Defoe and Olivier Zian, who are the, the kind of the two fathers in the story, in many ways this is a story of a custody battle between two men. And that's something I don't think we've ever seen, is these two men fight for control and the love of these little girls. My mother misses them, and so do I. Even though I'm just a father, I often wonder if they don't miss us too. The tragic aspect of it is that they, they never knew a normal family. After 30 years of silence, the three surviving Dion quintuplets, now 60, left the seclusion of a Montreal suburb to visit the set of Million Dollar Babies, the miniseries that tells the story of the first six years of their lives. For those involved in the film, the support of the Dion's was essential. No way would we have uh, proceeded with this project without making sure that they felt comfortable about what we were doing. And I felt that it was quite touching at the thought that these ladies were going to be there witnessing, you know, the filming of their infant years. It's been a long time. Remind you of anything? Everything we see here fills us with emotion. It brings back a lot of memories. That's pretty old, huh? Did you ever think they'd make a movie about our lives? No. How about you? It's something that happened. Now it's finished. It's over. And almost everything has been said already. Sometimes it was difficult for us. I didn't see the necessity to repeat it again. Me either. Then we decided that this was a good opportunity to finally set the record straight. The quintuplets were born two months premature, each weighing less than three pounds. Knowing they would never have access to infants so fragile, the filmmakers brought in an award-winning special effects team from England. The results were these five animatronic babies. And then it has to be molded and then you have to produce a, a core to work on, it's like a fiberglass shape to put the me a mechanics into, and then you have to have it uh, foam latex to create the skin, you know? Then it has to be painted and haired, and uh, then you put the whole thing together. head movement. Then you have a, m a mouth movement, a a eye blink, rather. Yeah. A bit of a challenge, really, to get the thing to move, but it's so small, you know, so tiny.
I'm sorry, Mr. Dion, but don't hold out any hope. Even if there were a hospital nearby, they'd never make it. They, they only weigh about two pounds each. I, I've, I've never seen a, an infant so small. Extraordinary. But this... It's a miracle. Isn't that something? Amazing. Not bad, huh? Hey, Cecile, you haven't lost your touch, huh? Solving the problem of the premature infants was just the beginning, however. The film needed identical one-year-olds and, most crucially, five-year-old quintuplets who could also act. Multiple birth societies were contacted, ads were placed in newspapers and on radio stations across the continent, and hundreds of children auditioned, all to no avail. Lucy Robitaille was the casting director and in charge of the search. The matching one-year-olds were finally found, but the search for the elusive five-year-olds continued. With the first day of shooting now just weeks away, a set of identical triplets from Snow Hill, Maryland, became the first step towards a solution for a by now desperate production. And out of the blue, one night at home, the phone rang, and it was a lady with the triplet connection. And she said that, according to her records, we had some identical triplet girls who were between the ages of five and seven. And she told us about this production company, and they were working on this project for the quintuplets and if we were interested to call. And we called, and here we are. Well, after I read the script, I said to John, you know, aren't we doing the same thing to our kids that they did to kind of exploit them? I was, it was such a sad story. Now the trick was to find twins to match the Gilliland girls. Once again, hundreds of auditions. Once again, total despair. Finally, at the last moment, a matching set of triplets from Ottawa. The other two are actually two of triplets, and we saw them at the hotel before their hair was dyed. They're, they're blondes. Very. And we were at first in shock when we saw them because they looked very different. We didn't see the, the resemblance to our daughters, but once they dyed their hair, and now they're on the set, and they're in the same costume, and they're, it's, it is, uh, it's amazing how similar they've made them look. Ivan is the biggest. Marie is the smallest, and Annette looks the most like Yvonne, and that leaves Cecile and Emily. And if you can tell the two of them apart, the last one is easy. Right, girls? <laughs> At first, they were extremely shy. They didn't want to do anything, and that, that, that was almost very problematic. It got us worried. And what you have to do it, is make them come on the set and see this as a game. Girls, Aaron and Grace. I'm Aaron and she's Grace. I know. Okay, Aaron and Grace. Grace and Aaron. On your hand. Not even like that. You're my little princess or something. Yeah, just, you know, you go to something. I love you all. Where's this hand? I want this hand. My little princess. You have to do me. You have to do me. Okay. You have to do me. On their visit to the location, the Dion sisters wanted to spend a few minutes with the cast and crew. <laughs> they were particularly anxious to meet Roy Dupuy, who plays their father, and of course Céline Bonnier, who portrays their mother. Well, you look like you're in good shape. Yes, I'm in good shape. I may be small and young, but I'm still a mother. Don't ask me to accept this. 
No, I said that my babies, when they have a bad dream and they cry, I won't be there. I won't be there when they have their first tooth, when, when they learn their first word. I won't be there. Nazir Zian is, um, for me, it's a kind of victim because she, uh, she cannot take any decision. The things are all happening really fast and she doesn't have time to react because things are happening in English also and she's a francophone, so she's kind of victim of that. And she's a real, real, real mother. The things that, that I don't play really often, but like that. For Quebec's superstar, Roy Dupuis, playing the role of Oliver Dion in English presented him with some dramatic problems. To work this character in English is a bit harder because he was French. So when I play him, I still want to keep that thinking, uh, that French thinking behind. Sometimes you, you just would... When you, when you do an intense scene or a scene when he's angry, where words would come out pretty easier in French because the character thinks in French. No, no, don't, no, no. Emmy Award-winning actor Bo Bridges immersed himself in the role of Dr. Alan Roy Defoe. At first, when I started reading it, I didn't realize it was a true story. And, uh, but I was kind of interesting. And then as I got to the part where they talked about naming this place Quintland. I thought, oh, this is too much. You know, the audience will never believe this. And then someone said, hey, that's a true story. And uh, I thought, well, my goodness, and, and this is incredible. And I, they really did get my attention. This is my uh, first time working with Chris John as a director. And what I found his greatest advantage over the other directors I work with is uh, that he operates his own camera. I think that uh, it's, it's wonderful because there's no middleman. I mean, uh, he is seeing the, the movie happen right, you know, as he's going to see it, right through the lens. So he can communicate to the actors exactly what he's missing or you've got to be over here a little bit. I mean, there's no question as to whether the operator and the director are communicating. And then are they saying the right thing to you? It's right there. During my research, of course, I immersed myself a lot in, in Defoe. But then right before I go on, I try to remind myself of him by, I have recordings of, of his voice speaking. And I play them to myself in my dressing room right before I come out. And it, it gets me into the right timber, you know, and he spoke a little higher. I, I used to be a doctor. I, I am yet. Uh, now I'm kind of a, a doctor. And a... Nowadays, I used to be a doctor. I am yet. And uh, now I'm a kind of a, of a doctor and a general manager. And a publicity agent, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. What was remarkable about this project is the amount of uh, research that was available to me, uh, not only on the written page, but uh, films of, of Dufault, old newsreels, uh, recordings. I had a still a photograph that I looked at of this very scene of him sitting there in a chair, so I kind of knew smoking his pipe. Dr. Defoe, what did the Quinties look like when they were born? Like rats. <laughs> <laughs> Little rats. So when I tell you, as a, uh, you know, a visiting Yankee, uh, amongst all you Frenchmen and a few Englishmen, I just want to thank you so much and, and tell you that um, really been uh, one of the best, uh, best times of my career. You guys have really spoiled me. You're a wonderful crew. And uh, let's party. <laughs> this was the Northern Ontario setting of the real Dion Farmhouse. The challenge for the film's location scouts was to find within an hour of Montreal a farm without visible electrical wiring, telephone poles, or neighbors. After hundreds of possibilities were rejected, a house was found that hadn't changed for 70 years. There was a girl taking pictures in the field in the winter. And? And uh, she, uh, I didn't think they'd come back. <laughs> they did come back, and soon the McCormick House was transformed into a film set. And across the road, the Defoe Hospital was built.
to cater to the three million tourists that trek to northern Ontario from around the world. A boom town called Quintland sprung up. And all this was replicated with its period buildings, its thousands of extras, and hundreds of antique cars. A serious problem for the costume designer was the scarcity of Depression-era outfits. This set her on an intercontinental search. So 1930s are hard to find because uh, people were very poor, so they didn't buy many dress, many suits. We do not have many photographies of that period as well because people were too poor to take photos. We start in the 30s and we finish late 30s, almost at the war. And also, uh, people start poor and they change. That for the parents, for the, the sisters and brother, and for the village as well, everybody become rich. And suddenly they buy a little hat and little dress, and it's not of the best taste all the time. Like your dress? I look like my grandmother. <laughs> this project posed tremendous challenges for the designers. On this day, the trick was to take this modern Montreal street and, in 24 hours, turn it into Chicago 1934. It's on days like this that producers get their ulcers. It's been sort of, you know, a difficult day. As you know, we had 270 extras show up this morning um, with teams of people that had to dress them, that had to change their hair into period hair, that had to do makeup. Uh, it's an enormous lighting job for the lighting crew. Well, they've changed Montreal to Chicago, 1934. So we've had to rent the exteriors of all the buildings and put new billboards that you believe existed in 1934. Today, on paper, is a wonderfully dramatic scene. You know, Oliva to this crowd in Chicago that's booing him, and then he sort of turns them around, and yet the press days later manipulate what happened for their own ends. You want to try and imagine what it's like to have someone take your kids away from you? Do you know how that feels? The first time our family came to visit us at the nursery, we saw them through a glass window. That was the very first time we met our family. We didn't know our brothers and sisters very well. They were strangers to us. Me good to see you all together. We don't feel people manipulated us as much as we used to. There are certain things that we can close the book on. But when we see all this, those memories come back to us again, especially as we get older. I was always impressed by the fact that people used to say we were a, a miracle. Well, a miracle when you're young, yes. I could believe it. But what I could never believe was how curious people were to see us. This I could never really understand. For me, I never got caught up in those thoughts. Life just continued. It had to continue. Strange, I don't remember the swings. I think they came later, Cecilia.
The resemblance is amazing. We could just see shadows. And we heard talking. We didn't really know what was going on, but we knew there were people there. When we read the script, I found the story to be very sad. And then I realized that we actually lived it all. It was very painful. There always be an England. Ta la 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 la. Ta la 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 la. Ta la 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 la. There always be an England. Why doesn't I be free? And if it means as much to you as it means to me. There are 